Hello everyone, very excited to present to you today 100 sight reading examples. This is going to be a lengthy video, so by all means don't be afraid to pause it and come back and take time to master each and every exercise one at a time. And if you need this in book form, you can check out 100 sight reading exercises on Amazon or linked at my shop below. Now this helps a lot to have these exercises in a hard form as well as there's a little bit of extra content in the book. Now as you approach this, you need to make sure that you master each exercise before you move on. Bookmark the page, do whatever you need to do to come back, but by all means don't expect to get through every single exercise in one sitting. This is a lot like my super popular music theory video here on YouTube, Music Theory in One Lesson, which you can check out by clicking up in the cards there. But there's a lot of information displayed and it, it is not really likely that you're gonna just be able to do all of this stuff after you watch the video. You have to sit down and actually spend some time doing the exercises, spend some time reading more music, etc., etc. This video is going to introduce each exercise, and each exercise is going to introduce only one new concept at a time, except for one exercise introduces two, but they're fairly simple, so it's okay to, it's okay to do that. Let's take a look at the staff. First off, you're going to notice that we have five lines on this staff from bottom to top. And we also have what's called the treble clef at the beginning. This is the clef we use to read out of it with the guitar. There are other clefs for instruments such as the bass or trombone, but we're going to be dealing with the treble clef. Now what you'll notice is as each note head, these black dots and sometimes they'll be hollow, as each note head moves up the staff as if it were a ladder, we move one letter forward in our musical alphabet. Now if you need to know more about the musical alphabet, Music Theory in One Lesson is an extremely popular and effective video for teaching this and you can find it on my channel. So as we move forward and upwards on the staff, we get the next note in the alphabet and of course after we reach where we started, so in this case starting on C and ending on C, it just repeats itself into infinity. Now a good exercise is just to know that the middle line is B and you'll be counting backwards and forwards to each note after that. Each example is going to introduce only one note at a time, so you'll have plenty of time to learn these. Don't worry about having them all memorized right now. Just understand that as we move upwards on the staff, we move forwards in the alphabet and downwards will move us backwards in the alphabet. Then what it comes down to is learning to count the rhythms as well as find the notes on the fretboard. It also helps to know where the open strings are. Now if you know where these are on the staff you pretty much have a reference point to find everything else. Again I'm going to introduce these very slowly through this video so no need to have them memorized right away, but if you do memorize anything today, this would be the thing to memorize. Also notice the numbers with circles on them. Those represent the string number, our low E being the lowest, our sixth, and our high E being the highest, our first string. You'll notice that the low E the note is far below the staff and we had to actually write what are called ledger lines to get that in there. And then as we move through the strings we get a little bit higher in pitch finally ending up on the high E. Let's take a look at the first characters we run into for reading music here. In exercise one the first thing we need to look at is our time signature. Here we have what's called 4-4, four, four, which means we have four beats per measure. A measure being the amount of space from each bar line to the next. We also have what's called a whole note. This is going to last for four beats. 
a half note, which will last for two beats, and quarter notes, which will last for one beat. And the note that we're going to be playing, you'll see here, is on E. And this is our open high E string. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pluck my open high E to the rhythm that is outlined here on the staff. Now you can use either your fingers or a pick. We're not going to get too, too much into the technique of this, as this video is more about the reading of the music. There are plenty of technique videos on my channel. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to count us in. We're going to go ahead and play through this exercise and then move on to the second exercise. One, two, three, four, 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 and stop. All right, in the next exercise, we're going to take a look at rests. Definitely don't forget. Exercise two introduces the quarter note rest, circled there. Now this is a quarter note, so it only lasts one beat. And what a rest means is silence, so you actually need to stop the string from ringing. I'm just gonna touch it with my finger to stop it from ringing for the beats that it's supposed to be silent. Okay, here we go, I'm gonna count in. One, two, three, four, one, two, Exercise three is going to show you another kind of rest. In exercise three, we have what are called half note rests. These work the same way, except they last for two beats. So let's take a look at this. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. All right, let's take a look at whole note rests with the next exercise. Exercise four introduces the whole note rest. This works the same way, except it lasts for four beats. One, two, three, four, one. Two, three, four, one. Two, three, four, one. Two, three, four, one. Two, three, four. Done. Okay, exercise five is just a quick review just to make sure that we solidify these concepts. And we're going to start playing more notes than just the open E. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, All right, let's move on to playing things that are a little bit more interesting than these first five exercises. Okay, in exercise six, we're gonna be adding a new note. That note is F, so you'll see it circled below. You're gonna play that on the first fret of your high E. So let's give this exercise a shot. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. 
This is the only exercise that's going to introduce two new things at once. First, we get the tie that you'll see on that E between the first and second measure. All that means is let the first one ring through the second. So it'll, it'll ring through the first beat of the second measure, and then we'll move off to the F. The next we're going to be playing is the G, which is the third fret of our high E. And you'll see that circled below. So let's count in and, and give this one a shot. One, two, three, four. One, two. Let's take a look at exercises 8 through 10, which are going to provide a review of all of this material. Don't forget to check out my shop to pick up. Okay, so exercise 8. We're going to be starting on our F with a quarter note, to the E quarter note, then our G half note, then F quarter note. after that, open E for a quarter note, G for a quarter note, and then F for another half note, finishing with a quarter note rest. One, two, three, four. One, few more notes in exercise 9 here. So we're starting with E quarter note, F, those are two more quarter notes, G, two quarter notes, F, G, F, both quarter notes, then we have a whole note rest, meaning we're resting for that whole measure, and then G for a quarter note, open E for a half, and finishing on a quarter note rest. So let's count in. One, two, three, four, one, Alright, exercise 10, one more review for this first chapter of my book, which you can again find on my store or Amazon. This one has some more rests. We're actually going to be starting with our open E with a quarter note, two quarter note rests after that, a G, another G for a quarter note, quarter note rest, G, going down to F, first fret there, quarter note rest, F, quarter note rest, G, G, another quarter note, F. So let's check this out. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Exercise 11, we're going to be introducing 3-4 time here. 3-4 time works a lot like 4-4 time, except we have three beats per measure instead. So we're going to count in using a count of three. Starting with a quarter note of high E, quarter note rest, we get our F, that first fret, open E, third fret for the G, going to get a half note on that, and then we get a little kind of descending thing. I'm going to let you figure those notes or watch my hand. So, one, two, three, one, two. Of 
course, if you're having any trouble with this, feel free to pick up the book from Amazon or my shop, musicandguitarlessons.com. Exercise 12 is going to introduce the dotted rhythm. So you'll see a dotted half note circled. Essentially what the dot does is it takes the original length of that note, which was two beats, and extends it by half of that amount, giving us three beats. So that first F is going to last three beats the entire measure. Then we have some other notes that you're familiar with, and of course a tie there between the third and fourth measure. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, exercise 13 is now going to take us to the B string. You see the B string circled down below. You'll notice this in the first beat of every measure. It gives us a little bit of what's called a bass pedal. And you'll run into these if you're playing classical and fingerstyle guitar quite a bit. It just means there's the same bass note kind of reoccurring. Now the other notes are all going to be on the high E string and we're finishing this exercise with a dotted half note. So remember, let that last high E ring out the whole way. Without further ado, one, two, three. 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 One, two, three, done. Exercise 14 introduces the note C. You'll, be, you'll see it circled below. And that is going to be the first fret of the B string. Now we're going to be going between the B and the high E string now, making our exercises not only a little more interesting, but a little more difficult as well. So let me just run you through this one real quick before we count in. Starting with a quarter note of C, then our open B, same string, then a high E. We're going to start the next measure off the same way. C, quarter note, B, and then we're going to get an F. Then we're going to get C, B, G, and then we're going to finish it off with something that should look familiar with you. So let's go ahead and count in. One, two, three. One. Okay, so this next exercise introduces the D on our B string. You'll see it circled below, and I'm playing it here with my pinky on the third fret of the B string. And the third beat of the first few measures is going to have a quarter note rest, so be sure to, to pause your strings. One, two, three. One, two, three. Exercise 16 is going to introduce eighth notes. So eighth notes, we're going to get two of them per beat. But the trick is that they divide the beat up evenly. And when we count them out, we use the word and in between the numbers. So you'll see down below, the first two measures are quarter notes, and then measures three and four are eighth notes. And then we end with our dotted half note after that. So I'm going to count this out for you. And this is all with our open B string start. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, and two, and three, and one, and two, and three, and one, two, three. Stop. 
Okay, exercise 17 is going to give us a little bit of review. If you notice, we're in 4-4 on this one. We're using all of the concepts leading up to this point. So we're going to be getting our starting with a C quarter note, open E for a quarter note, and then open B for a quarter note and a quarter note rest. Then open B, quarter note, F for a quarter note, E for a half note, D for a quarter note, quarter note, C for a quarter note, and another quarter note rest, and we have B, quarter note, D, and then C, or a half note. So, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, All right, exercise 18, this is another one that's in 4-4. Be careful to notice the quarter note rest at the beginning of this exercise. We're also gonna be getting a couple eighth notes um, mixed in between, so the fourth fret of the first measure, or sorry, the fourth, fourth beat of the first measure and the second beat of the third measure. We're gonna be getting some eighth notes, and I'll count those with the ands out with you. So we're getting quarter note rest, we get our open high E for a quarter note, B for a quarter note, and then C for eighth notes, D, open high E, F for a half note, and we're going to be getting G, quarter note, B as eighth notes, and then C, quarter note rest, quarter note rest, B, C for a half note, finishing it off. So one, two, three, four, one. Okay, exercise 19, we're in 3-4 on this one, starting with a quarter note of the G, quarter note open B, and then a quarter note on that C. We're gonna be going quarter note of G, quarter note of C, quarter note of B, and then G again, open E, B, F, open E, B, One, two, three, 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 done. Exercise 20, what we're going to be doing here, starting with a C on a quarter note, quarter note rest, B quarter note, C quarter note, quarter note rest, D quarter note, open high E quarter note, quarter note rest, we have F, G quarter note rest, G, F quarter note rest, D, C, and ending with a dotted half note. So one, two, three. One, two, three, 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 done. Okay, for exercise 21, we're going to introduce the concept of fingerings. Now, you'll see a one, a four, above the notes down there. And really what that's referring to is which finger on this hand, on your left hand. We have one for the index, two for the middle, three for the ring, four for the pinky. We'll talk about this hand towards the end of the video. Otherwise, everything else should look pretty familiar. 
We got something in 4, 4. So I'm going to go ahead and count us in. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. All right, exercise 22 introduces 2-4 time. A lot like 3-4 and 4-4 four, four works the same way, but we have two beats per measure now. Notice we're gonna be starting with our pinky, the fourth finger on the D there. Everything else should be pretty much a review. One, two, one, two, one, two. Exercise 23 is going to introduce the G string. You can see it circled below. And of course, this is my third string, third highest sounding string. We're going to be playing it at the beginning of measure one, three, five, and the last measure. The rest of the notes should look pretty familiar. Don't be shy on pausing the video and looking through it so that you have it down pretty well. This one's in two, four. Let's take a count here. One, Two. We're going to be adding in the note A. We're going to play that A second fret of the G string. And of course, you can see the note circled down below. A being a whole step above G, bringing us to the second fret. Now, if you need help with whole and half steps, check out Music Theory in One Lesson on my channel. And definitely don't forget to get this book. You can order it on Amazon or my shop, both linked below. This one's in 2 4. I'm going to go ahead and count you in. 1, 2, 1. Alright, exercise 25 is going to give us a bit of a review. This one's in 3-4, so we have three beats per measure. Notice that we have some eighth notes in here. Our rhythm overall is going to be 1, 2, and 3, and 1, 2, and 3, and. Definitely take some time to pause the video and look through this one. We're starting with the G, then four eighth notes with the G on the high E. Then we go to our A, second of the G, first fret of the high E for our F, same eighth note type of deal, open G, open E, four eighth notes, then we have A, uh, second fret of the G, D, third fret of the B, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and count you guys in, one, two, three, one, All right, guys, we're taking a look at exercise 26 here. This one's in 4-4, and it starts off with a dotted half note. Now, we haven't seen these in 4-4 yet. We only saw them in 3-4, where it took up the whole measure of three beats. Now we have four beats, so this one still takes up three beats. It only takes three out of four in the measure. So we're starting with a high open E at a dotted half note. And we move to an open B for a quarter note, and then C for another quarter note and then D for another dotted half note, and that will take us through the end of that measure. Then we get the second fret of the G for our A, 
the next open B for a half note, and then a quarter note rest. Then we go to this F here. This is a dotted half note, and of course I'm using my second finger so that I can sneak my first finger and get the next C. And you'll see kind of how I pivot to get into place for the next D. And then open E for a half note, and we have this eighth note thing, B, D, C, right? And that can kind of be tricky because we have slower notes and then a couple quick ones, but let's take a look here. One, two, three, four, one, two. Three, four, one, two, 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 three, four. All right, exercise 27. This one is a little bit longer, a lot more eighth note action going. This may be the most difficult one to date on this, on this book. Now, we're gonna be starting with A, second fret of the G, and we're doing an eighth note run, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and then C, D. We let that hold out, and we take the same kind of idea starting on G, With a, a dotted half note there. So I'm going to give you a count in. This one's in three, four, three beats per measure. So one, two, three. 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 Exercise 28, another review. This time we're starting on F. We're still using that idea of using the second finger, so the first can be easier to get there. For the C, which is the second note, this one's in 2-4, two, 2 beats per measure. And we get to A, second fret of the B, and we get some eighth note action again in this one. So we get B, C, D, F, A, D, E, G, F. So We've got a little more rhythmic variation, at, you know, still in line with the other ones. This one might be a little bit easier, and it is a little bit shorter. So let's go ahead and count in two beats per measure. One, two. 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 And by all means, if you are having difficulty keeping up with me, just pause the video and, and try to count these after either I've displayed them to you or even beforehand so that you can check your ability to read. All right, exercise 29. This one's in 4-4. Four, four. This is one that's probably a little bit easier than 27 was. Um, we've got a mix of quarter notes, eighth notes, and we have a dotted half note there at the end. So starting with open E, going to the G, third fret there, rest on the, the third beat, and then we have four and for a B, C, and then D, F for the next two beats, rest on the third beat, four and one, and then open E ending with a dotted half note. All right. Count you in. This one has four beats per measure. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Done. All right, so exercise 30, here's our last review exercise for this chapter. Just to give you a quick overview, we're in three, four. We're gonna be starting with our open high E, moving to a C after that. And then we have four eighth notes, A, B, C, D. And we get E, F, G, 
has quarter notes. And then we get two more eighth notes. A, B, C. And then we get F as a quarter note. G, A, B, F, E, D, E, F, D, C, D, F, C, B, C, F, E, C, D, D, C. All right, so I'm going to count you in. One. Two, three, one, 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 two, three, and one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. Okay, exercise 31 is going to introduce us to accidentals. These are sharps and flats. So what a sharp does is it raises a note by a half step. And a flat will lower that note by a half step. I totally recommend you check out Music Theory in One Lesson on my channel. It's an hour long animated music theory video that will take you through all of that. And it's something that's very good for every, every musician to know. So, with that being said, the first sharp that we run into is F sharp, circled below, and our regular F was there on the first fret. So if we're going to raise this one a half step, let's get that on the second fret. I'm going to be using my third finger because I just feel comfortable going from third to pinky. I think it's a, it's a good way to go for fingering here. Um, so this is in 3-4. Again, the last beat of the last measure has a F sharp. So let's take a listen to this example. One, two. Three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Stop. Definitely don't forget to pick up the PDF, which will explain this very, very well, or sorry, the book, rather, from Amazon or my shop, linked below. All right, exercise 32. Here's where it starts to get a little trickier. We're going to be using eighth note rests. So we're starting with a high E, and then we have an eighth note rest right after that, which means on the and of the two, so the and that comes after the two, I have to play my, that's when I play my open B and move forward. We get the same thing in the second measure where we play the A on the and of the two. And in the third, we get a G sharp course you see that sharp next to it and that's raising our open G up a half step to the first fret and we get another G sharp so what happens with these accidentals is the accidental applies to that note until the end of the measure until that bar line otherwise you know if we needed it to change from a G sharp before the end of that bar line we'd write in what it what looks like a natural sign and we'll get to those However, for now, just know that that G sharp is sharp until the end of the measure. All right, here we go. I'm going to count you in at three, four. One, two, three. One, two, and three, and one, two. Pause the video, take some time, and make sure that you really master that one before you move on. All right, exercise 33 is going to introduce your first flat, and it's going to be B flat. We're going to find B flat there on the third fret of our G string. So that's taking our open B down a half step. Now, it's important to know that this B, the fourth fret of the G string, is the same thing as the open B, and that's why oftentimes you'll see two, you'll see people tune those two strings together like that. Now, if this is the same as the open B, and we need to lower it a half step, there is our B flat. So, without further ado, I'm going to count you in to this one in three, four, making sure that that B flat is played with our fourth finger on the third fret of the G string. 
Here we go, guys. One, two, three. One, two, three. All right, exercise 34, we're going to be introducing our open D string. That's the fourth string here. That is our open D. Now, we're going to be playing this open D on the and of every beat. You'll see it circled below, so we've got a lot of eighth notes in this one. And this introduces a really cool idea called the bass pedal. So we're playing that note in between all the others. All right, we're also going to be looking at some more accidentals on this one. So we get a C sharp, which is our second fret of the B. You'll see it circled below. And we also get an F sharp. Well, that's not new. We had that in our first sharp, but it's in there. So be, be aware of it. So we're going to be going, and I'm going to leave the open Ds out just to explain this. We get A, and then B, and then we're going to go to D. And we're going to get C sharp, and then F sharp, and then our open E. Of course, all the way up to that D, we're having an open D in between. So here we go. One and, sorry, one, two, one, two, one, two. Okay, exercise 35. In this one, we're going to get the E on the D string. You'll see that circle below. So every time you see that note, we're going to run into E on the D string. Now, with this one, it's really important to note that we're going to be throwing in um, an F sharp up there. And actually, we can kind of get all these notes to ring together. So I'm going to guide you through each note one at a time because this one's a little tougher. So we're starting with our E. And we move to open G. Open B, high E, open B, open G, E, G. Now when I play that, that measure, I'm just going to keep this second finger down on E the whole time. So we get one, two, and three, and four, and then we get open D, A, second fret of the G, index, first fret of the B for the C, third finger, um, second fret of the high E for that F sharp. So one, either with your fingers or a pick. I'm doing this with my fingers. And then what we get is our D, G, B, G. Right? And then our E, A, C, E. All right, so I'm going to count you in. This is in 4-4, four, four, four beats per measure. One, two, three, four. One, Alright, exercise 36, it gets even trickier here. Not only do we have a new note, F, third fret of the D, which we're going to be playing with our pinky, and you'll see it circled below. We've also got some ties, eighth note rests, syncopation, and B flat as well as C sharp shows up again. So I'm going to walk you through this so that we can get the counting correct, and then I'm going to go ahead and play it for you. So when we do this, and actually you'll see the counting down below. I'm going to put the numbers next to the, next to the exercise here so that you can see, see it. The little plus signs are ands. We're going to get one and, so D to F. And then we hold it and we, then we let up just a little bit to mute it on the three. And then the and of the three we get F and then G for the next one. And the and of the one is a B flat. Hold it and on the three we kind of silence it. And of the three, we're gonna get an A, and the next one is G, and then we get another F after that. Hold it, and then the end of the three is an E. We get D, Fs are one and two and three. And so you'll notice that.
that measure, we have little ties in there. So we play one and two and three and one. And then the next, the next measure, we just get all the eighth notes. One and two and... So going from that B flat to C sharp gives us a really cool Arabic sound. And then D... Count you through this nice and slow. One, two, three. One and two and three. And 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 one and two and three. One. Okay, exercise 37. This one's going to provide a little bit of review all the way through 40. Okay, so what we're going to be doing here, is we're going to be starting with our F, and we get an eighth note E to G, second fret to open, right? And then back to the third fret of the D for our F. And then we get a quarter note E, pause for that quarter note rest, and then back up to F, and then we get eighth note G, B flat, third fret with our pinky, and then with our second finger, we'll pick up the A for a quarter note, open G. And then we're going to arpeggiate an F major chord. If you don't know what that means, check out Music Theory in one lesson. So we get fourth fret, second of the G, first fret of the C, and then second of the D for that E, open G again, C again, and then finishing with a, a half note, which is F. So let's take a, a listen here. One, two, three. One. Two, three, one, 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 two, three, done. Exercise thirty eight. This one's a little tricky. We're in three four course three beats per measure we're all eighth notes but you'll notice the last eighth note of every measure is actually a rest so the last note you're gonna have to stop and actually make it so that there's a little silence there also we're gonna be getting F sharp on the fourth fret of the D which is a half step up from the F that we already played on the D. of course sharps raising it a half step I'm going to run you through each note and which finger to use for each note, and I'm going to go ahead and play it for you. So we're starting with a G with our pinky there on the high E, third fret of the B with our third finger for the D, and we get open B, open G, open D, and then stop the note. Then open E, index for that first fret, open G at C again, and then second fret for the E of the D, and of course stop it. And we're going to get first fret or sorry, first finger, second fret of the high E for that F sharp, second finger for the D of the B, and then we're going to get open B, then F sharp, and then open D, and then we're going to go to third finger for that F sharp, which is the fourth fret of the D. And we're going to get second finger for that same F sharp, third finger for the D, index for the A, D, open D, and then we're going to get third finger for that next G, Second finger for the, the B, index for the A, and then pinky for that F sharp, and then open G, and of course we're going to have to stop it. So here we go. One, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, exercise 39, and this one we're in 2-4. We're going to be using the G sharp, but there's no other accidentals in there. Pay close attention to the fingerings listed, though, because we're going to be using different ones so that we can get some chords to sound out. So we're starting with our third fret on the A of the G, or sorry, third finger of the A of the G, at second fret. And then we're going to get a C with our index and an E of the D with our second finger. After that, we're getting with our fourth finger, an F, open G, and then you can use 
your second for the next A. B, and then we're gonna get D with our pinky and move our third finger there to get F, third fret of the D. And then we're gonna open G, A, C, B, G sharp with our index, rest, A. So here we go. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. All right, let's take a look at exercise 40. This one in 4-4 doesn't have any accidentals. It's a little more straightforward in terms of the notes. There's a lot of eighth notes, and there's a lot of movement. So I'm going to walk you through this just kind of one step at a time. First off, notice that we start with an eighth note rest. This eighth note rest means we're coming in on the and of the one. The first note that we play is the and after one. After that, we move to a C, down to a B, A, G, F, with our third finger. Then we're going to use our pinky to catch the next D. And we're going to be going back downwards. So D, C, B, A, G, F, E. And we're going to get our B again. B, A, G, F, E, D. And we're going to get our A. count in on this one and I take it nice and slow this one there's a lot of movement so if you need to pause the video and practice it please do so of course you can pick up the book on Amazon or my shop link below here we go one two three four one quicker. Of course, it's the last exercise of this review section, so I wanted to make it a little tougher. Of course, if you have any questions about this stuff, just leave them in the comments below. All right, exercise 41 is going to introduce what's called compound time. We're going to start with 3-8 time. This has one beat per measure. Which is weird, right? Because you see three notes down there. Well, actually, each beat of compound time, which is any of those time signatures that you see those eights under, is going to be broken up into triplets. So you see the counting listed below. We get one and uh, one and uh, one and uh, one and. Uh. Also, we're going to run into our first dotted quarter note. Now, a dot, remember, it extends the note by its original duration in terms of rhythm. And a quarter note, if you add on half of that, is adding on an eighth note, we get a quarter as well as an eighth note. So we get a total of really three eighth notes there. Now, the important part to remember is a dotted quarter note lasts for an entire beat in this type of time signature. And in fact, that's what the beat is based off of, whereas in common time, 3, 4, and all of that. We had a quarter note beat. This is dotted quarter note beats. So the third measure, we get a quarter note and an eighth note, right? And you'll see how those line up with the counting above them. So let's give this a shot. One and uh, one and uh, one. All right, let's check out 6-8 time for exercise 42. This works much the same way 3-8 does, but we have two beats per measure. So it goes 1 and 2 and 1 and 2 and 
Now you'll see the counting below. It's kind of listed out for you. Um, and of course, this is just the B string just to get started on counting these types of rhythms. So I'm going to give you a count in. One, two, and one. some time or some written explanations of this you can definitely check out the book on Amazon or in the link below um, and that gives you you know the chance to put this on your music stand and, and go through it nice and slow all right exercise 43 we're gonna be in 6-8 so the same time signature from the last exercise this exercise introduces the open A string circled below a string being that second thickest string. Now this is two beats, each beat broken up into three notes, and we're going to be playing a G sharp in there, so keep an eye out for that. All right, here we go. One and a two and a one. Okay, exercise 44, we're going to be introducing the notes B on the A string, 2nd fret, and C on the A string, which is the 3rd fret. So B, one circled now, and then C, one right after that. Okay, also pay attention to the, the fingers that we're going to be using. So we're going to be using 3rd finger for the 1st D, 2nd finger for that B, and then the C will use our pinky, and open D. Should look familiar. All right, here we go, guys. One and a one. Okay, exercise 45. We're going to be getting dotted quarter notes in common time now. Circle below, you see the dotted quarter note. Of course, it lasts for a beat and a half in common time, whereas in compound time before, it lasted for the entire beat. This means that we're going to be coming in on the and of the two, which gives us a cool syncopated feeling. Careful with the fingerings here. These are all notes that you're familiar with. So I'm going to count you in nice and slow and make sure to pay attention to those rests. And of course, pause this video if you need some time to work it out. One, two, three, four. 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 Done. Okay, exercise 46. This one's in 4-4. Four, four. We have another dotted quarter note, but everything else is review. Be careful of the C sharp, which you're going to find on the fourth fret of the A. Of course, C being the third fret and the sharp raising it up by a half step. Take some time to pause the video and go through this before you listen to me play it, of course. And if you're an owner of the book, which you can get on Amazon or the link below, put it on that music stand and work through it. All right, I'm going to count you in. One two, three, four, one, 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 two, three, four. Exercise 47, the 
This is another review. Now we're starting on our E flat here, which is the first fret of the D string. Again, if you find E, which was the second fret of the D, you flat it, that brings it one half step backwards to the first fret. This is in 6-8, so we get two beats broken up into triplets. I'm gonna count through this nice and slow. Also keep in mind we have A flat there in the second measure, as well as B flat in the third. All right, here we go. One and a two and a one and a two and a one and a two and a one and a two a one and a two and a done. All right, exercise forty-eight. This one is in 3-4. We've got a couple sharps here. Of course, the F sharp is on the fourth fret of the D string, and you'll find that in the third measure. So as the D sharp followed right after that, we'll be using the pinky to index, and then second finger for E right after that. Also, the rhythm, just to give you an idea, we get one, two, So here we go. One, two, three. One, two, and three, and one, two, and three, and one, two, three, one, two, three, done. All right, exercise 49. This one's in two, four. It's got eighth notes all the way through. We're going to be going between the A string and some other notes and, and kind of a melody above it. Now, we're going to start by putting our third finger on the second fret of the G for that A. Then our second finger will get the next note there, second fret of the D. That's our E. And then the index will get the B on the A after that. Then, you know, we go through a few more notes. You can take a look at those. Those don't need too much explaining. But next, when we go back to the next A, we're going to be getting our second finger. Then our first and then second finger for this C. All right, here we go. One, two. One. Exercise 50. We've got some more accidentals in this one. So most notably, we have C sharp there in the first measure. We're also going to be dealing with G sharp on the first fret of the G and F sharp on the fourth fret of the D. Now this is in 6-8, so of course that means that we have three um, beats for, or sorry, three notes per beat, two beats per measure. So one and uh, two and. Uh, you notice at the first measure we have one, two, and one, two, and. So if I were to snap my fingers on the notes that I would play, it'd be one, and uh, two, and uh, 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 one. All right, let's go ahead and count in on this one. One. Uh, two and a one and a two and a one the two and a one and a 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 two and a done. All right, exercise fifty one. This one's in 3-4 and introduces the low E string. Now first we're going to be going through a chord. We get one, and then next our E, second fret of the D, right? Open G, open B, and our pinky to catch that high G. Then we're going to get low E again. This next E is the same. And then our A, C, E, second fret of the G, first of the B, open E. And low B, we got D sharp, first of the, first of the D. Then we have A, second of the G, open B, pinky. F sharp, and then our original chord minus the pinky, and then add the pinky in the 
very last. So we get one, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, and three. And one, two, three. Done. All right, exercise 52. This one's in 6 8. And what it's going to introduce is the note F on your low E string. We're also going to get the note B flat there on the first fret of the A in just about every measure of this melody. So 6 8 again means that we have two beats, triplets per beat. We're going to be starting on the low F. And we're actually going to also move up to a G after that. So this melody also introduces the G. And our open A and the B flat. The rest of the notes should be familiar if you need a moment to pause it or better yet if you have the book from Amazon or linked at my shop below you can take a moment to look and play through. So I'm gonna go ahead and count you in right now. One and uh, two and uh, one All right, exercise 53 introduces what's called cut time. So what this means is everything is cut in half. So you'll see it looks like there's four beats per measure, but really there's two. And the beat this time is half notes. So when you get quarter notes, those function almost as if they were eighth notes, and eighth notes function as what are called sixteenth notes, which we'll run into later. So I'm gonna count you in on this one. This is, again, counted with only two beats. So we have one, two, one, two, one, and two, and one, and two, and one, and two, one, two, one, two, done. All right, so let's start reviewing all of the material that we've covered up to this point. Here in exercise 54, we have some cut time. Um, again, meaning two beats per measure, We're using all notes that should be familiar with you now. So if you need to take a moment to pause the video, take a look at the exercise and play through it, please do so. Or better yet, you can pick up the book at my shop or on Amazon linked below. So let's take just a moment and count in. One, two, one. Alright, exercise 55. This one has a lot of eighth notes and eighth note rests. So the idea behind this exercise is start to recognize things that have a staccato type of feel. Now these are not specifically staccato notes, which are very sharp, but this whole thing kind of has a staccato feel because we have eighth note rests between each note. Now, the notes here, these are all familiar, so take a moment to pause the video or open your book um, to read through the, the, the melody. I'm gonna go ahead and count us in. One, two, three, four. One.
All right, exercise 56, another review. This one's a little tricky. You gotta pay attention to the fingerings. It's in six eight, which means we have two beats per measure with triplets as the beat. Also, um, we're gonna be using our index and fourth finger quite a lot. And we're gonna be actually crossing strings in a tricky way, so I'm gonna run you through this. The first measure is pretty simple. Now on the second measure, we're gonna go index, third, and then pinky to get that E flat. And then third, pinky, index, and then we'll use our pinky to get the G there. Third, second, index, and then third finger for the fourth fret of the D for your F sharp. Then we're gonna pop back up here, third finger, pinky, index, fourth finger. Now you'll notice the index is on an F with what's called a natural sign on it. So that F natural is going to be your first fret. Then fourth finger for the G, third finger, second, and then we get into the basically the opening phrase. So let's count in. One and a two and a one. All right, exercise 57, we're gonna be crossing from the low E string to the high E string. Got some sharps on the way. Got a D sharp here, an F sharp on the fourth fret of the D. Of course, D sharp on our first fret. And that's about all for accidentals. This is nice and slow, three, four, all quarter notes. Let's check this out. One, two, three. Alright, exercise 58. This one's in 4-4, four, four, has a number of accidentals. We have our G sharp there on the first fret of the G. F sharp, fourth fret of the D. Right, and then we've got C sharp, second fret of the B. Um, and another C sharp, fourth fret of the A. Other than that, the rest of the notes should be familiar. Now we have a, a good amount of quarter note and eighth note mixture and eighth note rests here, so be careful of those. Now, if you need to pause the video to take a look or look in your awesome copy that you bought off my shop below or on Amazon, please take some time. I'm going to go ahead and count us in. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. All right, exercise 59. This one's in 2 4, so we're going to be counting two beats per measure. We're going to be going between the open D string and some notes up here. So we're going to D, E, F, E, F, G, F, E, D, E, D. And we're going to be putting the open D in between. Again, notice we have quarter note rest at the beginning for the first beat. Without further ado, I'm going to count you in. If you need to pause the video to look at it or look at your copy that you purchased off my shop linked below, please go ahead. One, two, one.
All right, exercise 60 is another review. This one's in 6-8, C major. We've got some rests and some eighth notes here. So let's just run through it nice and slow. We're using a third finger for the C on the A, second for that E, and then open G, and we're gonna use our pinky to get an F on the D. And there's a short rest. Then we get E, G, B, and then F again. And then E, A, C, F again. And then E, G, C, F, and then E, C. So let's count in. One and uh, two and uh, one. Now we're gonna take a trip around the circle of fifths. The way this is gonna work is we're gonna start in one key. We're gonna go around this circle of fifths. And I'm gonna show you a scale as well as a melody in each key. Now, if you're not sure what a key is, you should check out music theory in one lesson on my channel. It's in the description as well as the cards. It's a great video. It gives you a run through of its scales and chords and things like that. That subject is a little bit beyond the scope of this video. What I really want you to understand in this video is the concept of key signatures and how they work with reading music specifically. So starting with exercise 61, we're in what's called the key of C major, which means we're using the C major scale to build our melody. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play the C major scale for you. You'll notice this is this one's in four four. We're just quarter notes, and we're just gonna go from the bottom of the scale, which is C, to the top of the scale, which is back to C. So we get C, open D, E, F, G, A, B, C. So next. Let's take a look at the melody. You'll notice it's in 6-8, so I've changed time signatures here. But we're using all of the notes that belong to the C major scale. Now some of the notes are past where we played to, but they're the same notes, just all an octave higher. So you don't have to stop at the first octave, which is C to C. There's another octave. Now we're not going to talk about higher positions in this video, but we are going to use a couple of the notes that are in the higher octave. So we're in 6-8. Um, these notes should all look very familiar. We're starting with C. We're going to get an open G and then E, C, G. And then we're going to get a D quarter note eighth note B, D, G, B, D, quarter note, and an eighth note F, E, D, F, B, little rest, C. So I'm going to go ahead and count you in here. One, and uh, two, and uh, one. Okay, exercise 62 takes us to G major, which is a fifth above C. Again, music theory in one lesson will guide you if you need to know those definitions. So something to notice, we have an F sharp here. So we're taking essentially the same pattern, except we're starting on the note G and not C. And because we started on the note G, we get an F sharp. Now, let's play through this scale, and then I'm going to show you what kind of implication that has on the exercise. So, we have G, A, B, C, D, E, and then 
second fret for F sharp, G. Now, that F sharp shows up a lot, and if we're writing a melody in G, we may not want to write it in every time. So if we take a look at the melody, now what we see is we have an F sharp at the beginning of the staff. So that means all of our Fs are going to be sharp, and not just the one up here, but also this one and this one. Right? All of our Fs need to move a fret this way, a fret higher. Now this example is in 3-4. We've got a nice little mix of quarter notes and eighth notes. We're starting on G here, and we're going to go to open G. Then we get the fourth fret of our D string for an F sharp, another G, second fret of the G for an A, first fret of the B for a C, and then a quarter note, open B, little rest there. Quarter note D, quarter note G, E, F sharp, G. Right, so all of our Fs are sharp in this example because of our key signature. So I'm going to count in here. One, two, three, one, two, three, and one, and two, three. Okay, exercise 63 brings us to D major. Now, each time we move to the next note in the circle of fifths, we pick up an extra sharp and we keep our last one. So you'll notice we have an F sharp, but we also have a C sharp now. So we go with open D, second fret for the E, fourth fret for the F sharp, and we get open G, second of the G for A, then we get open B, and then you're going to get second of the B for C sharp, and then, of course, the third fret there for D. Now, if you look at our key signature here, we've got F sharp and C sharp. So every time we see an F sharp, we'll get an F sharp. Every time we see a C, or an F, we get an F sharp. Every time we see a C, we get a C sharp, unless they write in what's called a natural sign, which you've seen in one of the previous examples. This one's in cut time, so remember everything is kind of cut in half. We're starting with an open D, we get our F sharp, and then our D, right? Open E, F sharp, C sharp. And we're going to get an E, second fret of the D, we get G, C sharp, and then we're going to get uh, D sliding our third finger up. F sharp, second fret, and then D again. So I'm going to count in. Remember, only two beats per measure on this. One, two. One. Alright, on to A major. As always, if you need to stop, pause the video so you can read the exercise, or better yet, you can buy the book listed at my shop or on Amazon, 100 sight reading examples for guitar, um, please do so. Um, I tend to move quick just so that this video is not nine hours long. So we're going to be going to A major now keeping our F sharp and C sharp, and now we're going to collect a G sharp for that collection of sharps. You'll notice that our key signature coming up will have a G sharp in it. So we have A, open A, B, C sharp, D, and then we have our E, F sharp, and then G sharp, and A. And you could keep it going. So A, So, um, the melody, this one's in 4-4, four, four. we've got some eighth notes and just kind of like a descending type of scale through what's called A major. And again, you can check out Music Theory in one lesson on my channel if you need more information on that. So we start with an open E, 
then we get D, C sharp, E, A, G sharp, F sharp, G sharp, right? And then we're going to be stepping back up to A, G sharp, F sharp, E, D, C sharp, D, and we get C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G, A. All right, I'm going to count us in here. One, two, three, four. 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 Done. Exercise 65, taking us to E major, the next key in the circle of fifths. Now we're going to pick up a D sharp, so fourth fret of our B as well as the first fret of the D. Right? So if we start the scale on our D string, we get E, F sharp, fourth fret, G sharp, first fret, A, and open B, C sharp, D sharp with the pinky on the fourth fret, and then Okay, so when, when we go through this exercise, we're actually going to be using the open E between the notes. We've had a couple examples like this. We're starting with the open E, then we get our G sharp, and E, A, E, open B, E, D, E, or sorry, C sharp, E, D sharp, E, E. So you get this really cool sound between the D sharp and E, which is a half step. We start with a quarter note and we go into some just some eighth note runs there. This is two four, two beats per measure, so I'm gonna count us in. One, two, one. major for exercise 66. This introduces A sharp, third fret of the G, or, or sorry, first fret of the A. I accidentally my open A there. First fret of the A. Um, and as you can see, there's a lot more sharps here. That the, the key signature looks a little more complicated. So let's go through this nice and slow. B is second fret of the A, pinky for the C sharp on that fourth fret, index for the D sharp, second finger for the E, we can keep that pattern moving up. Of course, we're not going to move up here in this video. Now let's take a look at the exercise. We're starting with a B. This is common time, four beats per measure. And then at that dotted note, we get an eighth note of a D sharp, open E, a little rest, F sharp, and then D sharp, again, dotted, B, and then we're going to get A sharp, use our pinky just to kind of get us in place, G sharp, then F sharp for a quarter note, D sharp, dotted quarter note. We come in with the E, F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, right? And another A sharp and then B. So let's let's count in so that we can get the rhythm nice and clean. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two. All right, exercise 67, F sharp major. We're getting a lot of sharps now. We actually get an E sharp, believe it or not. Now, you'd think that's stupid because that's the first fret. Isn't that an F? But yes, E sharps exist. And you can just think that the F is wearing a disguise known as E sharp so that he fits in with his friends in F sharp major. If you want any real clarification on it, 
check out Music Theory in One Lesson on my channel. It's an hour long. It runs you through all that stuff. So we're going to be going through the scale, starting with F sharp on that fourth fret, G sharp, we get A sharp, oh, excuse my fourth finger, why not? Open B, C sharp with our second finger, D sharp, and then E sharps on the first fret, and F sharp. Now we have some more E sharps, right? So we have an E sharp here, third fret of the D. Okay? And we also have an E sharp, first fret of the low E. So let's take a look at the example. It's in 3-8. You can see that the, the key signature is pretty complicated here. But remember, we're keeping all the sharps from the last ones. Um, and you have to be careful, you know, to play the E sharp the third fret of the D there. So we start with the low F sharp. With our pinky, we're gonna get the F sharp here on the D after that. And then E sharp, and we got rest in between these, right? After that is open B. And then we're gonna use your fourth finger for the A sharp. Positioning your third finger for the E sharp. Back up to the F sharp. So let's check this out. One. Exercise 68, C sharp major. This may well be the only time you play in C sharp major on the guitar. Who knows, though? Who knows? Um, we're starting with C sharp here, fourth fret of the A, D sharp, E sharp, F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, and B sharp. Yes, B sharp exists. You're just going to have to accept it. C sharp. And we have another B sharp there. No, they seem like C's and they might be in disguise, but for now just accept their disguise. If you need any further clarification, music theory in one lesson on my channel or the book listed in the shop, those will help quite a lot. So as you can see this melody looks pretty complicated too with the rhythm and everything. So I'm going to walk you through the notes and then we'll count through it. We get C sharp, E sharp, make sure third fret there of the D, G sharp. And we just kind of go between those notes for the first measure. And the second measure, when we play the G sharp, play with your second finger and your index for the, the, the B sharp. And I know that seems silly, but it's easier to come to this pinky um, if you set it up that way. It's just more complicated to play it the other way. And we get another C sharp, F sharp, C sharp, A sharp, F sharp. So let's count nice and slow through this melody. Uh, if you need to pause the video, of course, do so. And if you've got the book on hand, take a moment to look through it. One, two, three, four, one. All right, exercise 69 takes us to the terrible land of C flat major, where we have all flats. The next exercise, I'll give you a break and give you something in C major. This one, be a little tough. We also have to think about F flat, which is a hard one to think about, and C flat, it's a hard one to think about, which we have, you know, kind of like E and B in disguise. So you're gonna have to take your time with this one, by all means. You know, you should have the, the book open in front of you. You can find that at the link below. Let's start by going through the C flat major scale. So we're going to start with C flat, second fret of the A, and then D flat with our pinky, E flat with our index on the first of the D, then F flat, second of the D, G flat to the fourth fret, A flat here, B flat. C flat open B. Now the reading example 
um, kind of leaves that octave. We're starting with our G flat here, and then we're gonna get F flat, G flat, um, and then E flat on our B string, fourth fret, D flat, second fret, then B flat, we're gonna get third fret of the G, and then C flat, open string, and then A flat, first of the G. And then we're gonna get F flat to E flat, G flat, B flat, C flat, C flat, that open string. All right, so I'm gonna count you in. You get one and uh, two. One and a two. And a 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 done. All right, let's take the same exact uh, melody from the last one and do it in C this time. Just to give you a breather, we did a lot of accidentals the last handful of exercises, and I'm going to bring us back to C major where we have no accidentals. We're going to play the same melody, but this time in C. So if you don't know what it is to transpose a melody, then check out Music Theory in One Lesson on my channel. You can also definitely check out the book on my shop linked below. Now, we're going to be starting with G instead of G flat, then F, G, E, D, then open B, A, second of the G, then F, E, G, B, C, C. All right, so let's count in. One and uh, two and uh, one and uh, two. Let's take a look at D flat major with exercise 72. We're losing the C flat from last time. Everything's flat except the C and the F. So if we go through this scale, we're starting with E flat, fourth fret of the A, then E flat, first fret of the D, F, third fret, G flat, fourth fret, A flat, first fret of the G, right? B flat, and then C. Now, of course, take your time, pause it if you need to. Better yet, if you have the book, which you can get linked below, you can go through this nice and slow. We're in 3-8 here, so we're going to be starting with a D-flat. We're going to go to an F, and then what we're going to do is we're going to play that same D-flat with the third finger, but slide back to the C so we can use our second finger to get this A-flat and our first finger to get the next E-flat, and we'll kind of pivot out to get the F, right, and then index again. For our A flat second finger for the the C and then D flat again with our second finger. So if we get one and a 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 done. All right, let's take a look at D flat major with exercise seventy two. We're losing the C flat from last time. Everything's flat except the C and the F. So if we go through this scale, we're starting with E flat, fourth fret of the A, then E flat, first fret of the D, F, third fret, G flat, fourth fret, A flat, first fret of the G, right? B flat, and then C, D. Now, of course, take your time, pause it if you need to. Better yet, if you have the book, which you can get linked below, you can go through this nice and slow. We're in 3-8 here, so we're gonna be starting with a D-flat. We're gonna to go to an F, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna play that same D-flat with the third finger, but slide back to the C so we can use our second finger to get this A-flat, and our first finger to get the next E-flat, and we'll kind of pivot out to get the F, right, and then index again for our 
A flat second finger for the, the C and then D flat again with our second finger. So if we get one and a one. All right, exercise 73 is taking us to A flat. Let's start off with the scale. We have B flat, E flat, A flat, and D flat. Hopefully you have the book for this linked down below. Now you got A flat here, fourth fret of the low E, B flat with your index, and then your third finger is gonna get C, D flat with your pinky, E flat, F, open G, A flat, first fret of the G. And if you wanted to keep going, A flat, B flat, right? C, D flat, E flat, pinky there, F, G, A flat again. So in the exercise, we're in 4 4. The counting's a little trickier, so I'm gonna run you through. So we get one and for the A flat, rest and for the C, third finger for the D, pinky for the B flat, and then index again for the A flat. And we're gonna get open G, F, D flat, E, F, G. On the end of the four, we get. Okay, exercise 74, E flat major, B flat, E flat, and A flat in this one. So we start with E flat, first fret of the D, F, G, A flat, B flat, C, D, E flat. Now, the example's in 12 8, so we have four beats per measure, broken up into triplets here. We're starting with a rest, and then we get G with our third finger, E flat, and D, then E flat, D, B flat, right? And then we get F, D, C, and then D, C, A flat, right? And then D, C, three A flats. time with this. Two and uh, three and uh, one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, one. All right, exercise 75 takes us to B flat major. Definitely pause the exercise if you need to take time or get the book linked below. We're starting the scale on the first fret of the A for our B flat, third fret for the C, open D, E flat, F, G, A, B flat. And if we wanted to keep going, C, D, E flat, F, G. And then we're not going up here in the video, but don't worry about reading that stuff yet. So our example is in cut time. Now, with this example, we're going to be doing two beats per measure. Of course, cut time, we're starting with B flat, getting a D, B flat, and then C, D, C, D, and then open D, or sorry, open A, F, E flat, F, right? And then E flat, D, B flat. All right. One. 
two. All right, exercise 76 takes us to F major. The only accidental here is B flat. We're starting with F, third fret of the D, open G, A, B flat, C, D, open E, F. And these notes should be familiar to you by now. So the examples in 4-4, we start off really low in the register with that low F. We get open A, and then first fret for the open B, or sorry, for the B flat, first fret for the B flat, open A again. C, F, right, A, and then B flat, A, C, then D, E, F, 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 E, F, E, F, E, F. Okay, here we go. One, two, three, four. One. All right, everybody, we're going to introduce dynamics now. So this example introduces the idea of piano and forte, as well as crescendo. So piano means to play quietly, and forte is loudly, and crescendo is to come up in volume. So we're going to be going from piano to forte through the whole exercise. Now you'll see the F sharp in the key signature. We're in 4-4. Four, four. This is in the key of E minor. We didn't run through the minors in, in our tour of the Circle of Fists. If you want to check that out, Music Theory in One Les Lesson is a great place to start. If you need to slow down a little bit, definitely pause the video to look at the example or get the book out in front of you, which you can buy at the link below. To go through the fingerings, we start with E, second fret of the D, open G, open B, open high E. Then we get G, and then F sharp, So let's do this nice and slow. One, two, three, four. One. Exercise 78, this introduces our sforzando, which means sudden and loud, and a decrescendo to mezzo forte. We also have mezzo piano in the beginning, so mezzo means medium. So medium soft for mezzo piano, medium loud for mezzo forte, and sforzando is like, bah, it's gonna hit you, and we're gonna be hitting a B flat. We're gonna make sure that that note is a nice loud note. This is in the key of B flat major, so make sure to check, you know, the, the exercises before, if you need to pause it, open the book, all of that, you know, the deal. Let's go through the, the fingerings. We're in six, eight here. So we start with B flat, and we get a D, then E flat, and D. We get F, D, E flat, D, right? Then C. Sorzano is supposed to jump out at us. So here we go. One, and uh, two, and uh, 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 one, and uh, two,
All right, guys, exercise 79. We're going to be doing some slurs here. Now, the slur looks like a tie over multiple notes that change pitch, which means the first note of the grouping is going to include the right hand, and the rest of them are played with just the left hand, right? Now, if you need to know how to do slurs, I have exercises for that on my channel. Check out my channel. This is a video on reading music, so we're going to stick to that. Um, I'm going to run you through the fingerings here. We're in 12-8. That means we have four measures or sorry, four beats per measure, broken into triplets, as well as we're using the B minor scale here. If you need to know more about that, Music Theory in One Lesson on my channel is a great place to go. So we start with an open B, we get F sharp, B, then D, E, hammer on to F sharp, hammer on to G, then G, slur to F sharp, slur to open E, right? Then D, B, D, slurring to C sharp, E, C sharp, G, guys exercise 80 grace notes here grace notes you see these little teeny F sharps followed by regular size E so what we get is just a quick slur and if we were to go up you'll see in the, the last measure we have a D sharp up to E They're just really quick right before the note this is an E major so check out music theory in one lesson if you need to know your keys and of course pause this or open the book that you can find at the link below to just take your time and read through it and when you're ready, watch me play it. We're in cut time, so we're cutting everything in half. We get one and two and Slurring from F sharp to E three times, then D sharp, D sharp to C sharp three times, then B, C sharp to B three times, then A, C sharp to B, D sharp to E, F sharp to low E. All right, everybody, exercise 81. We're in the key of F major here, and we're introducing accents. So, of course, if you need to take a moment to let, take a look, pause the video, or hopefully you have the book is linked below. Um, you're going to be starting with F, accent the A, F, then C, accent the G, E, you see those little alligator mouths, right? D, accent the B natural, which is your open B string in this case. You'll see in the key signature we have the B flat. We had to natural it here. So accent with the open G after, then E, accent the C, right? Open G, D, accent the G, C, one and one all right exercise 82 introduces the tenuto now this is uh, something I've seen a lot of Facebook arguments get very long and heated over kind of weird when people argue over this stuff but basically what a tenuto means is give me a milky note sometimes I even stretch the note duration just a little bit to really hold it it's kind of subjective what a milky note sounds like so you're gonna have to do your best to develop this but you'll hear the accent the tenuto is just this little line above the notes you'll see below we're in C major we're starting with the C sorry C going G A B and then milky D right and then C, E, and you want to milk it, and then D, E, F, G, right? Um, 
and then the next milky note after that is where F, E, D, C, B, tenuto, and then C. So let's check this out. One and two. All right, exercise 83, we're gonna introduce staccato notes. Now this is kind of tricky. A Couple ways to play staccato. You'll see them circled below. They're the notes with the dots above them. Now you can either stop it with your finger or just lift up after you play it. Again, this is a reading music video so we won't get into the technique of it too much, but it should be staccato, which means a short, kind of quick note that goes. Right? So we're gonna be doing open A, E, staccato A, C sharp, staccato C sharp, because we're in the key of A, A here, so look at the key signature. And open E, E, staccato G sharp, D, staccato D. Then F sharp, D sharp, staccato A, and then staccato, or sorry, regular D natural and staccato C sharp. And then B, E, staccato G sharp, C sharp staccato, staccato A, open A. So let's count in for this one. By all means, pause it if you need to, or hopefully you have the book, which is at the link below. So we have one, two, three. One. All right, exercise 84 introduces the fermata. Looks like that little kind of Egyptian eyeball symbol above that F there in the second measure. Basically a fermata, just hold the note as long as you want, and then once the fermata's done, when you're ready to keep moving on, then just pick up the tempo where you left off. So we're gonna be starting with open A, then we're getting A on the G, open A, C, open A, E, and then to hold this. Then we come in on the end of the three. A, F, A, E, A, B, A, C with your second finger so that you can A, G easier. Then A, A. And you hold that last one as long as you like. So here we go. One, two, three, four. One. All right, exercise 85. We're gonna be introducing accelerandos and retardandos here. First, notice we're in 9-8, three beats per measure broken in triplets, one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, next we're in D minor. Notice the B flat and the key signature. If you need to know more about your keys, music theory in one lesson on my channel homepage, that'll help you a lot. Um, it's helped countless thousands. Definitely pause it or take a look at the book that is available at the link below. Soak this one in, it's a little trickier. So accelerandos simply start speeding up and retardandos start slowing down. It's kind of to your taste. I like to speed up very slowly. It's a little more subtle for me. Some people do it a little more bombastically. So I'll count it as we go. We're going open D, A, D, A, D, F, D, A, D, then B, D, A, right? B, C sharp. Tell her on. 
those will speed up retard on those slow down so here we go one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, one All right, guys, let's take a look at exercise 86. We've got some staccato notes and all of that, but first let's talk about a repeat. It's at the end, you'll see the double dots. Basically, repeat it, play it twice. We're in B major here, so if you need any clarification on your keys, music theory in one lesson, and hopefully you've got the book open, which is linked below. We're starting with the F sharp here with a staccato note, open B, then E staccato, open B, F sharp staccato, open B, E staccato, open B, E sharp staccato open B E staccato open B D sharp again B C B B B A B B B You notice that the open Bs are not staccato all the other notes are cut time so we're this is 2 beats per measure and everything's kind of divided in half so these quarter notes are really eighth notes don't forget to repeat at the end here we go 1 2 1 All right, guys, exercise 87, common time, G major. Check out the F sharp and the key signature down there. We're going to be doing first and second endings here. So put quite simply, first time through, we play what's under the bracket in one. Second time through, we skip that and play what's under the bracket with two. You'll notice there's a repeat there at the end of the material under bracket one. Definitely pause the video if you need to take a look at the sheet music. It's here on the screen or you can get the book at the shop linked below in the description. I'm gonna run you through the notes. We have G, then we have a little rest, open G, D, D, right, B, G. And then we have a tie into the next measure, so then we get A, C, D, F sharp, A, C, D. And then another tie, open G, D, D, F sharp, Another tie, C, G, E, C, D, B, G, D, A, and then F sharp in the low on the low E, and then E, F sharp, G, coming back through the repeat. Second time through, all we have is a D, B, G at the end. So here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two. Hey guys, exercise 88. This one's in G minor. If you need to know more about G minor, Music Theory in One Lesson is a great place to start on my channel. It's right on the homepage. B flat and E flat, you'll notice in the key signature down there. Um, so of course our E's, we can't use the open E, right? And we have B flats, which is first of the A, third of the G, E flat being fourth of the B, um, and first of the D. So, this introduces DC alfine. 
which means go back to the beginning and play to finney. Pretty simple. Um, we're in 6-8 here, so two beats broken into triplets. Um, starting with G, B flat, then A, C, then G, B flat, B flat, D, G, B flat, B flat, D, G, B flat, B flat, G, D, G, C, G, B flat, G, A, G, G. Then you go back to the beginning, play to finish. Here we go. One and uh, two and uh, 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 one and uh, All right, exercise 89. This is an F sharp minor. If you need to know more about that, music theory in one lesson, it's gonna be the spot to go to. That's a video on my channel. You can see it right on the home channel. Understanding music theory in one hour. This is in common time, and we're introducing DS alfine. So when you see DS alfine, you're gonna to go to the S and then play to finne. Um, Pretty simple. The S symbol, you'll see it, it kind of looks like a weird dragon like critter or something along those lines. Um, like I said, pretty simple, pretty straightforward. Now, this one's a little trickier. I'm going to walk you through the fingerings, and we're actually running into a strange thing called E sharp, um, which would be on the first fret of your E string. Yeah, I know it's silly not to call it an F. If you watch my music theory video, that'll shed some light on why we're calling it E-sharp. That's beyond the scope of this video. So we're in common time, four beats, starting with F-sharp, um, dotted quarter note, then A, G-sharp, F-sharp, and then we're going to go B, A, C-sharp, B, D, C-sharp, And then we go through this descending scale. So we get F sharp, B, e, D, C sharp, B, e, A, G sharp, F sharp, B, e, D, C, D, F sharp, and then D, C, B e sharp. And we go back after after that measure is done, then we go back uh, to the symbol, which gives us C sharp, B, e, D sharp, C sharp, B. E, Let's go ahead and count through this nice and slow. One, two, three, four. One, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, two, three, four, one. All right, exercise 90. I tried to make this one just a little bit funny. We don't really need to challenge ourselves to understand this concept. Um, we are in C flat major. Very weird. Very, very weird. Not going to play in that key a lot, right? C flat major. What a nightmare. However, we're only going to be learning multi measure rests in this one. And, well, it's going to be a boring exercise. All we're going to be playing is a B flat. And then we're going to rest for four measures, and we're going to get another four beats of a B flat. This is in 12 8, so we get one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and 
and uh, three and uh, four and uh, one and uh, two and uh, three and uh, four and uh, one and three and uh, four and uh, one. Four and a one and a two and a three and a four. And a so we rest for four measures. And you just see that big long thing that says four multi measure rests. Have fun. Let's read some chords. So this is more of the classical way to read chords. This is in chord charts. We're actually getting all the notes of each chord. Right? Now, what we're going to be doing here. Um, and I have a kind of a weird fingering for that first chord, and you'll see why. Uh, so we're going to start with a D major 7 chord. Um, so that's D, A, C sharp, F sharp. Of course, we're in 3, 4, and in the key of D major. And then we're going to go to an A7 chord, just by lifting it up and keeping the third finger there. And we're going to slide the third finger up for another D chord. But this one's just a regular D chord. And then we're going to place our pinky on that G, and we're going to get our G major chord. So we have G, B, D, G, D, G. And then slide our third finger back again, A7, slide it up again for the D. This is a 1 major 7 chord, followed by a 5, 7, 1, 4, 5, 7, 1. If you don't know what that means, music theory in one lesson is a great place to start. Understanding music in one hour, you can find that on my channel. I'm going to count us in. One, two, three. One, two, three. All right, exercise 92, we're going to start doing some strumming directions for these chords. I'm just going to use the index finger, just going down. We're starting with an E minor chord. Then we're going to go to an A minor. And then back to E minor. A minor again, and E minor. Now, how we're going to do this, is you, you'll see the direction. So we do first a down strum. You'll see the arrow. So it's down, and then down. simple again this is just how to read it I'm not trying to to um, show you the hardest thing to play right now it's just how to read music so let's go ahead and dive right into this one one two three four one, two three four All right, let's look at bars. Exercise 93 is going to introduce the bar. We're starting with our first bar in the F major chord. So we bar the first fret. We have our C, F, and A there. So we get a measure of rest because I want to give you some time to switch to the C chord. That's next. So it's basically a C with that low G in there. So we have G, C, E, G, C, E. Just look at all the notes and find them one at a time. Of course, it helps if you have the book, which is listed at my shop below, so you can put it on the music stand. And then next, we're going to be doing a B flat major chord. Then we're going to go back to a C. And we're going to go to an F major chord. All right, so that's a that's a good old one, five, four, five, one progression. Um, if you need more explanation on that, well. Um, music theory on my channel. So, um, of course, we're in F major here because of the B flat. Uh, remember our trip around the, the, the circle of fifths. We're going to count in on 4-4. Four, four. So here we go. 1, 2, 3, 4. Four. 
course, we have a fermata at the end, so it's like kind of like a little Egyptian eye symbol, which means you can hold it as long as you like. Um, take this one slow. Bars are tough, but have fun with it. All right, next we have the half bar. You see the little sign followed by C. That means first position. So half bar, C1, the Roman numeral after the C means you know what fret the bar is on. If it's a half bar, we're covering three out of six strings, right? Um, you have all kinds of bars. You know, you have a, a four out of six bar. You've got a, I, I tend to use either whole and half. I don't, you know, there are playing situations where you have to use, you know, a, more of a, five string bar and all of that, but that will be notated in the music and it becomes very clear um, with this type of convention how much of a bar to do. Now we're in F major again and we're actually going to be playing kind of the same thing except just not full bars. So we have a half bar on the first, first fret um, and I'm just barring three of those strings. You can get four if you want. It really doesn't matter too much, but it's a half bar. We have F, A, C, F. Get to a little bit of a rest, and we're going to C. All right, and then I'm going to go to the B flat chord again, um, but this time it doesn't have to be a bar itself. And we're going to go back to C, and then we're going to go back to the half bar F. So here we go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Of course, there's a fermata. Hold it as long as you want. All right, let's get to right hand fingerings. Finally, right? I actually, maybe I should have put this at the beginning of the video, but I didn't. This is about reading music. This is intended for any guitar player. My channel is mostly about fingerstyle and classical guitar, so I'm sure my students really want to get to this exercise specifically, and it's a really pretty exercise. And I've actually lifted it from a person who is long dead named Mauro Giuliani. He had 120 of these awesome finger picking patterns. I will be doing a video where I go through all 120 uh, at some point in the near future. However, for now, I'm just going to give you one of his exercises and I'm going to tell you how we notate the finger picking hand. So we have P for thumb, I for index, middle for middle, and A for annular or ring, A, P, I, M, A. So if the, the note has a P next to it, thumb, and so forth. So um, we're starting with the C major chord and we pick through it with this really thumb, index, ring, thumb, index, middle, thumb, index, ring, thumb, index, middle. And you'll see that little simile thing that just means do the same, same pattern of fingers through the whole thing. And we switch to a G7 chord in first inversion so we get thumb, middle, or sorry, sorry, thumb, index, ring, thumb, index, middle. on a little C there. So here we go. One and two and uh, one and two and uh, one and two and uh, one and uh, two and uh, one and uh, two and uh, repeat and uh, two and uh, one and uh, two and uh, one and uh, two All right, exercise 96. Um, this kind of furthers the same idea. We're gonna use a different pattern here. We're gonna do thumb and ring at the same time, and then middle index. And that's, that's another pattern and we're just gonna repeat the whole time. Um, starting with our fourth finger on that G, notice we have an F sharp, we're in the key of E minor here. You can get more music theory stuff at my channel. Um, there's a repeat and we're in six eight. So we get, so those two notes, the E and the G, and then B, G, F sharp, B, G, and then we're going to get A and G at the same time, and then C and A, F sharp, C and A, and then 
I'm just gonna lift it up and get the open D and open E, A and C and A, F sharp C and A, and we're gonna go back to the it's basically the same as the first measure. And we'll repeat it and then end with two E's. So let's check this out. One and uh, two and uh, one. All right, so we're gonna leave first position. I tried to keep this whole thing pretty much in first position, but I want you to be prepared to recognize not only position marking, markings, but string markings, because sometimes you're gonna play a no note elsewhere. And this G is not the only place to play that, right? Because you can also play it up here, and it has a different sound, different things that you can do, like a, you know, slides. Right, you can't really do some, there are certain things that you just can't, how are you going to do that going between strings, right? So let's learn how to do that. Um, now you see the, the numbers with circles in it, that means string. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six from highest to lowest. The third is our G string. So we're starting with open G, we get A, and then we get that B with our third finger and another half step up to C, which is the fifth fret. So open, second fret, fourth fret, fifth fret, right? And then I'm gonna go up to seventh for D, and that's a familiar looking D, but we can play it here, right? Third finger for E, and I'm gonna slide that third finger up for F sharp, because we're doing the G major scale here, and then our G on the 12th fret. Every single string repeats after the 12th fret. So if you did the same kind of idea, you can go all the way up each and every string. Now you'll see the position markings too, those Roman numerals. So what that means, is that's where your index is aligned. So here we have our index aligned with the second fret, right? And then up here for the D, we have it aligned with the seventh, right? And we get our third finger here. We slide that up, and then here we are in ninth position. So that's how that works. Um, practice going up and down each string, just naming the notes. All right, so we're going to do the same exact thing as the last exercise, 97, but in 98, we're going to actually cross two strings. So we're going to go to the B string, which is our second string. You'll see it circled there. So we start with our open G, then our index, our third finger for the B, pinky for that C, and then we're going to shift up to seventh position with our index, catch that E with our third finger, and instead of sliding up, we can just move our index here to the B string for F sharp and G. So if we did the first exercise, it's right, but this one is same sound, right? Just different ways to play it. And of course you see the position and string markings there. Next one's really cool. Um, this is where reading music really starts to make things very powerful for you. So we're gonna be playing an open G on that same scale between each note. So our open G, so that was open D, our open G, same note is found here on the fifth fret of the D. You see that's our fourth string, four circled. We're starting with our second finger. So we do G, G, and then A, G, right? Um, and then open B, G, and then I can just go here, C, G, right? So overall, I mean, that's kind of a cool effect, right? So we get G, G, A, G, B, G, C, G. Cool, right? Exercise 100 blank staff. The reason you've learned to read music is so that you can communicate 
not only with others that are trying to write it so that you can play it, but you can also write your own. I think it's really, really, really important to be able to, to just sit down and experiment with things. This video is a very long video, and if you've gotten to this point, thanks for watching. I hope that you learned a lot. I also hope that you picked up the book, which is linked at the shop below, so I can keep doing this for people. And I, I really hope that you are brave enough to learn some music theory as well and put your reading and theoretical abilities together so that you can create your own music and experience your own voice with this just absolutely beautiful instrument. Now, I do all kinds of teaching every day with not just students in person but on Skype and I make YouTube lessons here. And I will tell you, all of my students that begin to read music fluently, they just do better. And I think that you will too. Now there's, there's a big argument about tabs versus reading sheet music out there and I am on the sheet music side. I think tabs, uh, I, don't know, I don't like them. Now I'm not going to tell anybody they're bad for using them and actually some of my students I work off of them with, with tab because they just don't want to learn to read music. But since you've taken this step to learn to read music, congratulations, you are one step further in the journey to musicianship. So please subscribe to this channel. You can also check out the music theory video which I'm going to place conveniently here at the end. Have fun. Definitely do not forget to subscribe and like this video.